To find the resonance structure of CO3 2 minus, what you're going to do is first find a Lewis structure that's very stable. So first, list out your uh, valence electrons, so it's going to be 4, and then 6, 6 times 3 will be 22, and then you have your 2 minus charge, which means you actually have 2 extra electrons, so it'll be 24. Now, what you usually want to do for the loose structure is put the least electronegative atom in the middle and then surround it with your oxygens. That's what I did here. Put carbon in the middle and your oxygens um, surrounding it. Now, uh, w uh, this is actually the most stable structure because um, carbon is uh, has no charge. We have an oxygen that has no charge. And then the negative charge is actually on the most electronegative atom, which is oxygen. And uh, we only have two charges, which is usually what you want. You want a maximum of two charges on your molecule. Uh, and then now, since we have a stable structure and it follows all the general guidelines, um, now we can try to find um, resonance structures for this compound. So whenever you have a resonance structure with double bonds and lone pairs, what you're usually going to do is make the lone pair into a double bond and the double bond into a lone pair. So what do I mean by that? Well, here. So for here, I have the arrow pointing from the lone pair and creating a double bond, right? And then from here, I made the double bond into a lone pair. So it's essentially the same structure, um, but uh, just the, like the double bond in a different place. So that means that both of these are equally um, as stable and that means that this negative charge is distributed. And now, um, one more time, I can, I can make this one, the double bond into a lone pair. And over here, I can make this uh, lone pair into a double bond. And that's over here. And that'll be your final thing. And then don't remember, uh, or remember actually, uh, when, you, when you're converting between lone pairs and double bonds, um, your charges are going to change. So that's really important. To keep track of. And then finally, when you're converting into a double bond, make sure you're not uh, breaking the octet rule. For example, if I only did this part, if I didn't do this part, um, I would end up with five bonds and that would be breaking carbon's octet. Um, so uh, always keep that in mind. Always put your negative charges. And then since all of these are stable, what this means is that the negative charges are equally distributed between all three oxygens. And then the final thing is, um, if you, whenever you have um, this type of structure, right, you have three atoms and a del bond, uh, you can usually guess that there will be three resonance structures because this, um, this del bond can move. Uh, and when I mean three resonance structures, I'm including the original. So you have your double bond in this uh, format. What that means is that you can usually move this double bond into these two places, therefore having three resonance structures. So I hope that helped, and thanks for watching.